Chapter 4 Oxygen Uptake and Carbon Dioxide Release Respiration The main job of lungs is gas exchange, breathing oxygen and getting rid of carbon dioxide. The diaphragm will pull down and the lungs will expand so oxygen will enter. When in breathing out or exhalation, carbon dioxide will be out of the lungs. The diaphragm will be up and the lungs will get back to their normal size. We breathe in oxygen to the nostrils and enters the nasal cavity. Nasal cavity contains cells that release mucus that is salty and sticky and contains lysozymes. These are enzymes that kill bacteria. Now the nose hairs are able to trap pollen, bacteria and dust because they are coated with this mucus forming clumps called booger. From the nasal cavity to the pharynx or throat. From the larynx to the trachea or the windpipe. Then it's going to split into two bronchi, the left and the right, and then it's going to enter the lungs, the right and the left lung. The right lung is formed of three lobes, while the left lung is formed of two lobes only the upper and the lower. The right bronchus is wider and more vertical. So the bronchus is divided into smaller bronchioles and end up with tiny sacs called alveoli or singular alveolus. This is the final destination of the inhaled air. Now in the alveolus, the gas is going to be exchanged with the blood capillaries. Now the blood capillaries are rich with blood that comes from the pulmonary arteries that are deoxygenated. At this point, carbon dioxide is diffused from the deoxygenated blood in the capillary to the air in the alveoli and breathed out. And with each breath in, oxygen enters the alveoli and diffuses into the blood. Now that oxygenated blood heads to the pulmonary vein, to the heart, and then to the body's tissues. Now at the end, as a summing up, the respiratory system facilitates the gas exchange, the oxygen in the air is inhaled and makes its way to the pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, alveoli, and finally to the capillary to be sent to the body's tissue. Now the carbon dioxide makes the reverse journey to eventually be exhaled into the air. Now the protein hemoglobin that is present in the red blood cells has a greater affinity to oxygen than to carbon dioxide. So when hemoglobin attaches to four atoms of oxygen, it is going to be called oxyhemoglobin. So we are going to have in the blood capillaries oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin is going to be released in the tissues. Then the carbon dioxide will diffuse from the tissues to the blood capillaries. And the carbon dioxide is going to be called in this case carbohemoglobin. Now let's look at some respiratory disorders. We have the pneumonia, bronchitis, asthma, and emphysema. So, oxygen and carbon dioxide are carried and transported by blood. When hemoglobin binds to oxygen, it's going to form oxyhemoglobin, and that is a reversible reaction. In the lungs, hemoglobin plus oxygen, we will have oxyhemoglobin. In the cells, oxyhemoglobin is going to be broken down into hemoglobin and oxygen gas. Small amount of oxygen gas is dissolved in plasma. Now, large amount of carbon dioxide is dissolved in plasma in the form of carbonate and bicarbonate, and a small amount binds to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin with carbon dioxide, we are going to have carbohemoglobin. That's why hemoglobin has a higher affinity to oxygen. So in the lungs, carbohemoglobin is going to be broken down into hemoglobin and carbon dioxide. In the cells, hemoglobin plus carbon dioxide, carbohemoglobin. Now let's talk about smoking. 
and the cigarettes we have a gas it is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide has a higher affinity with hemoglobin than oxygen so hemoglobin will bind to the carbon monoxide rather than binding to the oxygen and carbon monoxide is a harmful gas this is a picture showing asthma asthma is characterized by the constriction of bronchioles bronchitis is marked by the excessive production of mucus in the trachea bronchial tract emphysema it is a respiratory disease where some alveoli do not function due to the destruction of their walls now let's try solving this question together the adjacent document reveals the amount of oxygen in different parts of the respiratory system during inhalation. The first question, knowing that the amount of oxygen is 21 ml and 100 ml of inhaled air, indicate the respiratory parts through which oxygen is conducted and that are the sites of exchange of this gas and justify the answer in each case. Now the action verb indicate you have to just answer, but if you look at the question, you are going to see that is followed by another action verb, justify. So when you write your answer, you have to justify it. We are going to look at the document, which is the table. Now from the document, we are going to see that the amount of oxygen is the same in the nasal cavities, trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, which is 21 milliliter. So this is the answer of the first part. Well, in the second part, the site of exchange is the pulmonary alveoli. Why? Because the amount of oxygen decreased from 21 to 14 milliliters. Now the second question is to list the characteristics of the sites of this exchange. We are going to say that first, it is rich in blood vessels, large surface area, and there is a thin wall. Now the last part, emphysema is a respiratory disease where some alveoli do not function due to the destruction of their walls. In this case, how would the amount of oxygen vary at the level of these alveoli? Now the answer is, since in the case of emphysema, the amount of oxygen does not vary, it remained approximately constant at 21 ml or slightly varies since the walls of the alveoli are destroyed, the exchange will not take place. Now let's look at the second question. The graph in the adjacent document shows the variation of the concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide during the degradation of glucose in an animal cell. Based on the document, we present in the same table the different values that show the variation of the concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the function of time. When we want to draw a table, you have to close it, so we have to draw all the borders of the table. Then we are going to start with the x-axis. and Don't forget to write the title of the table, and please don't forget to write all the numbers that are present on the document or on the graph. Don't write any unused value. Now, the last two questions, analyze the graph, what can you conclude, and then name the reaction of the degradation of glucose in the presence of oxygen. When we want to analyze, we have to write the variable factor and the result. Since it's a graph, we are going to write increase, decrease, or constant. We are going to take the first point and the last one. So at time 0 minutes, the time at which glucose degradation begins, the concentration of oxygen, which was 10.5 mg per liter, decreases to reach 6.5 mg per liter at minute 4, while the concentration of carbon dioxide, which was 6.5 mg per liter at time 0 minutes, increases to reach 8.5 mg per liter at minute 4. Now for the conclusion, we are going to write therefore, or I conclude or we conclude, the animal cell needs oxygen for the degradation of the glucose. We are not going to write the significance which starts with this shows. Okay? Finally, this is an oxidation reaction is the answer of the last question.